Oh, you're up there. I didn't see you up there. What are you doing up there? You following me? You're watching what I'm doing, aren't you? Today is Friday. The weekend's coming. I can't ride my bike, and I think we've got a sunny weekend tomorrow as well. So it'd be nice to go out and ride it. So I've kind of freed up my afternoon to put this back together again. And I've got another exciting new product to put on it as well. That's pretty cool too, which I'm gonna show you. I can't turn the tracker off because it's on my phone. Um, right. <laughs> okay, so, and, and you are looking, you're watching me through my phone. And I think we should definitely turn that tracker off. Definitely. So let's bring this down here. Stop recording. So this is now turned off the tracker. Right. So let's start getting this jacked up. Right, so today what I'm going to do, I'm putting my bike back together. I still haven't got round to actually fitting the sound bomb to my bike via a relay. So I'm, I still haven't disconnected it from my CanSmart to do it through a relay. So I'm going to do that now, put the bike back together. And I've got a new front guard to go on the bike as well. And let me show you the guard. So basically, there's a link down below showing you where you can buy this. The link goes to my website and then you can click through to the Lone Rider website to buy this. Isn't that cool? Here it is here. So I'm gonna show you how we can actually install this because if you, if you have got a Denali kit on your bike and you've got the mounting bars, which are connected to, to just here, if you've got that, well then we need to undo this so we can fit this to the headlight guard. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. I've, I haven't even fitted one of these yet, so you're gonna watch me doing it firsthand, see how easy it is or how difficult it is. So if you wanna free up a circuit on your CanSmart, you need to buy one of these, link down below in the description. And this is for the wiring harness, which has the relay all included, so you can wire it straight up to the bike. And you also need to buy one of these, which is the adapter which plugs into the current horn connector on the bike. You join these together and you can literally free up the circuit on the CanSmart so the horn is working all by itself through these, through these components here. But the good news is your lights will still strobe when you hit the horn, it makes no difference. Okay, I've actually removed my horn. It normally sits there. I don't know why I removed it. It's in the cupboard behind the bike. But that is the cable there, which would normally feed the horn. So what we're gonna do is uh, open up the packet. And all we do is we plug this into here until you get a nice click. There we go. So that's now in there. Now, because they're both black, it makes me wonder if it matters which way we get it around. But I just go by the, the colors on the back here. You can see on the back of the plug, there's a brown and a green. Brown is generally ground, so we're gonna say that is the ground wire and that is the positive wire. Now we're gonna open up the harness. There's an instruction manual in there. I always say read them, I've already read one. There's a bag of connectors. I found that I didn't need these when I installed it on a customer's bike earlier in the week, but handy to have their spare connectors. So what we have here is, so that is not the relay. The relay plugs into that. And basically you want the relay that came in the box with the sound bomb. That's what's needed. So the relay doesn't come with this wiring harness. So on the other ends of this, you've got three different things. You've got one which goes to the battery with a fuse. And you'll find that this is a quite a hefty fuse in here. I think it should be 30 amp. It's 30 amp. So that, go, that goes to the battery. These two here, they go to the connector we just put on the bike. And then these two here go to the sound bomb. Right, so let's, let's get on with it. And also let's, uh, let's find a relay. So I need to ask myself a question. Do I want to take the fuel tank off again? And I think that would be a pretty good idea. Now, the only reason I'm taking the fuel tank off is because there's just more things being fitted to the bike. You don't have to remove the fuel tank to fit a straightforward Denali bundle. That's not necessary. But um, if you've got the NLV K2 on there, you've got um, a Jivy power supply on here, you've got harness for the relay, basically that wiring harness we're putting on there now for the sound bomb, well then you, you need to start thinking about 
uh, making more room. So we're going to quickly whip the tank off and uh, go for it again. Undo the breather pipes. All right, so we're just going to move this for, uh, backwards a little bit so I can access the, the connections behind the petrol tank. And I'm going to try my very best to give you a better view of the connections. So let's see if I can get down there and disconnect it with all these cameras and, and lights in my way. Uh, as I tried to show you the other day, I'm, I'll show you now. This one here, can you see this, uh, the, the, the larger one? And when you look down there, because there's three connections, when you look down there, there's like a, a little metal tab on top. Uh, I have noticed on the newer 1250s, is, is like a white collar on there, but it's exact same fit, fitment. And all you're doing is you're pushing down on that, on that little um, silver tab. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Pushing down with my thumb, and that just pops off. And you might get a little, a little dribble of fuel, not a lot, just a tiny little dribble, but then it just stops straight away. So then, to get these off, all we're doing is um, going down the side. So I'm going, I don't think you can do it from this side. So I'm going down on this side, and I'm putting my screwdriver into this little wing, and just prising the wing up. Like I say, this is very hard to do, and show you at the same time. I don't want to scratch my paintwork on anything either. So, there you go, there's one. And then, and then there should be two. It's coming, it's coming, and there's two. So then we can carry the fuel tank away, carefully. There's the, the petrol tank there. I'll just show you inside there so you know exactly what to expect. All right. I'm gonna pull this away. I don't really wanna be advertising this all over the world, <laughs> but that's my tracker for the bike. I've got my tracker in here. I've just had a call for my lunch, so I will be back in a roly mo. Sorry about the noise of the heater. It's getting a bit cold in here, so I need some extra heat. So I know there's a lot of wires behind there, a lot of wires, but there's a lot going on. So this is me just plugging the relay in. You can't get this long way around. It's very clever how it's been put together. But because it's four, all sliding in at the same time, there's a bit of resistance there. That is on. Is it possible to fit this in here? I don't think it is. It might be, it might be. Let me just check the bottom of the tank. No, I don't think it will be. I don't think it will be. Because the bottom of the tank is, has got a dip in it. And so I know it fits fine with the tracker there, but that's just sticking up a bit too much. So we're gonna have to uh, put this somewhere else. So I'm going to thread this through. Now, don't be tempted to attach the relay to this screw here like I did the other day. It had to come off again because the panel that comes in behind here, it's, um, well, it, it attaches to a hole with a black pin just down here. But uh, if you put the relay there, it gets in the way of the panel. Right, I'm happy with, actually I might. Let me just, oh yeah, pop it in there. That's quite nice. That's nice. Right. So now I'm going to take the, before I start dealing with, with these sides, I'm going to channel this through. <clears throat> and if you pull it just about right, I can still access the fuse from through the side panel. And before we attach all this, I'm going to take the fuse out. Before we attach them there, and now going to turn the heater off because it's getting hot again now. We're going to feed this one here up to these connections there. Obviously we're not going to go on the outside. She needs to do a neat job of this. 
So I'm going to follow up here. Well, I could probably poke this through. So if I do this and plug these in, and I'm going to put the blue to the brown, yellow to the green. Let's tidy this up now. Okay, that, that there is put to power up. To, sorry, to connect my D4 to when I put the crash bars back on because my D4s are currently on my crash bars. So that's that part of the sound bomb. And then you've got to actually, you've got the actual cable here to actually get to the sound bomb itself. So let's thread that through. That's very, very simple. So all we're gonna do for now is just pop it through around the back of the the, the frame, not around the front of it, so it rests against the, the fan. And we can walk around the other side. And uh, it's already here. If I bring the camera around and you can see it. Can you see it just, just there? And there it is. So <clears throat> we'll do it at the end because I'll, I'll lift the front of the bike up so we can get to it and we'll uh, stick that on. I can connect it now actually. So ground on the left, positive on the right, and then I'll, uh, at the end we'll, we'll put the front up and we'll just pin that up so it's uh, not dangling down. So now that's like that, let's connect up the battery. And then put the fuse back in, put the cover on, and we'll tidy it up in a second, but let's test the actual horn is working. Now the fuel tank's not on, so we're gonna get a huge error on my dash. And then here we go. Ready, steady. It works. And that's not going through the can smart, which is great. So the thing is, I'm very particular about having wires nice and tidy, but these fuse blocks don't half get in the way. They make it very difficult for us to be able to, you know, I can slide that one under there. There we go. And then the one to, the one that's going to the can smart, that fuse, that's very difficult to, Ah, uh, there we go, that's better. Good job. Very good job. All right, we'll bring that down. All right, that's all nice and tidy in there. Let's put that cover on. Looking good. Let's, let's give you a, sh uh, a close up of the, I know you saw it earlier, but I just want to be able to see exactly what it's like and how tidy, because th this is actually very, very tidy. Like the job I did to a customer's bike on Monday, which uh, I put a link up above to that, uh, on his 1250 was doing the same bundle as mine. His was very, very good. Uh, because I suppose my bike's been a work in progress. I've slowly added bits to it constantly, but I, I have recently just taken everything apart and put it back together again. Uh, but that, that is uh, very, very tidy indeed. At this stage, I'm gonna put the fuel tank back on. So I'll do that now. So replacing the felt again. Good tip, try and drain your tank before you start doing a job like this. So those plugs I showed you earlier, I don't really need to show you a close up of this. They just click straight back in. Nothing clever or fancy you need to do. And you can't get them wrong because they're both different sizes. 
click, click. So that's the two connections for the uh, the wires. And now I've got the the fuel line, and pop that on, and just push it in. So it clicks. Give it a pull. Make sure you can't get it back out again, which I can't unless I press that clip down. It's great. And now just slide it into place. Making sure the breather pipes don't get caught. I might as well put those on before I get it into place. So as you're lowering this down, obviously it slides in quite well because of the felt, but you've got to get these holes lined up perfectly. That's it perfectly in line. That's it. So I, I know that it, it wouldn't be sitting in that position if the two C-shaped things on the tank weren't locking into the, the two large plastic barrels which are down on each side which locks that in, locks it in place. So now that's like that I'm going to start feeding this the wire, the power for the keyless fuel cap down on top of the air filter, the black box on the top. May as well put the, the height, or the, I don't know what the word for it is, but the, the little bridge thing, this thing here. So making sure they're all lined up, and which they are. I'm now going to put that in like that. Those two screws there, that's slightly larger screws than the standard screws on the bike. Uh, they're T T30s instead of T25s. Now we've got these here. We need to make this nice and neat. I'm basically going to cable tie it to the blue strut. The blue strut right at the back. Obviously yours won't be blue if you haven't got a GS Adventure Rally 2018 model. Yours may be a different colour. And now, so that is the, um, that's the excess slack on that sound bomb cable. So that's coming from the back, of, back end of this relay. The other one is going to the sound bomb. So we've got all this slack here, which we need to get rid of. I want to keep it up out of the way and away from that radiator, away from the fan and the radiator. Obviously there's a cage on the back of the radio, of the fan, so it can't get into it unless you had a loose end falling into the back of that cage. So we're going to cable tie that in nice and tidy there. Do you know what? I'm going to put this one, tuck it down here. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to tuck it in between my air box and fuel tank. Why? Because I can. <laughs> no harm in it at all, rather than putting more stuff down here, because we've got a panel to go in here, and that's got to fit in this gap here. And so it's going to be pushing this. I might have to push this around the further around the back or bring it forward slightly just so it fits in there. Right, I'm happy with that. The horn is now very well installed. And if there's ever a problem with the relay, it's very easy to access by taking off the panels from the right hand side and you've got the relay just there rather than put, leaving the relay in the tank. Uh, I don't mind because I'm always taking my bike apart anyway. So taking the tank off isn't really a huge issue to me. All right, let's um, start putting it back together again. So I'm gonna let the bike down so I don't need to get under the nose right now. Take it off the ground just a fraction. Right now, this has been apart for quite a while, so I was trying to remember where everything goes. And is that the right one? No, it's not. That is the other side. It's pretty straightforward when you get there because you get along the leading edge, and that's the bit that goes under the under the fuel tank. That piece there. So um, that's for the other side. Let's get the other piece, and here it is here. Right. So this is how it all goes together again. So you've got a little um, plug just there with a bung just there. And then you've got a little um, like ledge which goes over this hook. So you kind of got to do it all at the same time. It's not easy. <laughs> 
Okay, that's in, that's under that ledge. And then I can fill the resistance already with those cables around the back of here. And all I'm doing is lining up the, the hole down here and getting the black pin that I took out when I took it apart. Ah, got my seat adjuster, I might as well put that on while I'm here. So it's, it's basically like a little, uh, little black plug and then you put a pin in afterwards. Uh, on the um, R1250, it's really hard to get to. I don't even notice on the video. I, I know I time-lapsed it if you watched it. It took me ages to get it out, ages. I just couldn't get a screwdriver in there to get behind it to start prizing out the pin. So that's like so. Push the pin in, give it a bit of wetness. And push that in. If you can't do it with your hand, just get a back of a hammer or something. But that's all the way in. Right, let's start putting some screws. I've been doing this a long time, so I, I, I know what screws go in what holes just by looking at the holes. And you get different types of screws. So this is um, a short, sometimes I get it wrong, but I know if I've got it wrong once I've got it in there. I can tell by looking at it. That's right. Short shoulder. This is also a short shoulder. And another short shoulder. All right, so that is that whole panel on. Oh, so many different ways of doing this. But remember, I, I need to plug my Denali D4s in yet to, to, to this connector just here. So it's, uh, it's not all that straightforward because a lot of people I've seen in service centers will put the, the nose piece on now and then put the rest of it together. But if I do that, I'm a bit lost on this. So, um, and then they put the crash bars on right at the very, very end. So we need to kind of like, do you know what? I actually don't know the way. I kind of, I'm just gonna figure it out as I go along. <laughs> So we've got this panel here. So as you can see, that's the air, that's the air intake. You obviously need to line it up with the air intake for the air box. There. But I need to make sure I've got that lead out for the D4. That's going in later. Now we're not actually gonna completely fit this, otherwise it's gonna screw me over a little bit. We're just gonna rest, get rest it on. So I'm going to put a screw in up here to begin with. So these are good old long ones, these are. Now this one a cover goes on. So I'm gonna get this one, nothing, clip, nothing clips into anything on this panel, which is good to know. No clips involved. So we're gonna get this one on now. Uh, that's a short, hang on, let me double check. That's a deep shoulder. Yep. <clears throat> so that gives us that movement still there, which is good. That's what I want. Now what I'm gonna do, rather than take the camera around, we're gonna spin it round. Now we're gonna do this side. But let's get this panel on. So, same again. Little, uh, same as the other side, really. Flick that, get that little uh, metal piece under the, the ledge. Pop that into the plastic grommet. It's sitting there now. And put a little black pin in there. So there's the the black barrel you put in there. You then put the pin in there, which is in here somewhere, and that stops that from coming out. There we go, that's in. Then start putting these screws in again. There we go. That gives us movement so we can do everything we need to do up here. Now I've just noticed I've got a lead dangling down here. Do you know what lead that is? 
That's my old sound bomb, sound bomb cable. I completely forgot I left it in place. I think what I'd rather do is leave it actually in place and tie it up because then I can always uh, chop and change if I really, really wanted to because it's not going to be plugged in at the CanSmart end at all. So let's get a cable tie and do that. So it's literally just kept cable tied to the uh, where it comes up under the handlebar on the blue framework of the bike. So it's high enough to be dry. It doesn't matter if the contacts get wet because the contacts at the other end are not plugged into anything, or they won't be. Right, so as it is right now, I'm going to put the uh, crash bars on. So what we do on this one is the bung at the side, you keep that all loose, it's all connected. You push that loosely into there. You then make sure this bit is loose down here. Slide that into there. Okay, the other side's just come out now, the black bung. I didn't say it was easy. So let's get that in. The important thing is you don't tighten anything up down here until this bit's in. So I'm gonna put this bit back in again, which involves a lot of wriggling around. That's it, that's, that, that's in. And then we get one of the bolts. Alan, fetch Alan. Alan, Alan. Alan! Alan! <laughs> so we get Alan. And uh, Alan can then get this bit in. So what we're focusing on here is making sure the bung does not fall out. But at the same time, trying to make these meet. It's not an easy job. But it is possible. It's possible, it's possible. <laughs> he says. <laughs> Obviously it's a lot easier on a standard GS Adventure without the Toratec upper crash bars, a lot easier. Okay, I got it in. That was a bit tricky. So before I tighten it, I'm gonna make sure that's all the way in. So I'm just gonna pop that in. That's it. That's all the way in there. Tighten that up. So by tightening this up, it then swells the rubber bung. There we go. Then we can tighten this one up here, all the way in. And then finally, this one down here. There we go. And this is still free to move. So whilst that's like that, I'm gonna bring the D4 cable round and plug that in. If I can find the plug, the D4. There we go. And once that's like that, we can put the nose on, but we're not gonna put the nose on just yet because we need to fit our new headlight guard. So we can leave that off for now. Right, so that's that side done. Let's now spin that round. Oh, this one's much easier. And as you tighten it, it will expand the bung inside the hole, making it a good fit. There we go. And then to finish off on the bars, just compress, compress this down as you're tightening it. And plug this into the D4 connection here. Good, very good. Right, so we've got um, most of the bodywork back together on the bike, but before I put the, the actual fairings on, the final fairings, those ones there, I'm just going to fit the Lone Rider Moto Guard piece. But what we need to do is the, the, the mount which holds the D7s on, this big mount here, I need to not take it off, but just take off those two bolts each side, 
to put the Moto Guard product onto the headlight because it's going to sit in between either the washer on the nut or the washer on the bike. I don't know yet, but that's what we're doing now. I've just literally just offered it up into position. So I've already assembled this part of the Lone Rider motor guard, but it's not fitted. I've had to undo my Inov on the front mount there, and we're gonna fit that back on afterwards on top of this. So I'm now gonna undo the bolts at the front. So let's get a couple of 13, 13 mil spanners. Well, actually, if I do one at a time, they're not, they're not going to fall off at all, are they? Now, that makes perfect sense. So, let's have a quick look at this. Already dropping bits and pieces. Right. So, my suggestion would be to... Yeah, put the washer on top of the... The, the motor guard. So I'm gonna put that like that. I've got a bolt here somewhere. Okay, you're not gonna see any any of this because the uh, the covers the covers hide it all, don't they? And all right, I'm not gonna go tight. Right, and I might have to put some um, lock thread on that as well. And the other side. Uh, I probably would normally say don't do this the way I'm doing it, but this is on a hinge. So there's, it, there's plenty of, this will move without putting any strain on that side there because this is a very expensive product, but reassuringly expensive, a very good brand and, and very, very good quality. It's, um, it's very good. I haven't seen one on the road yet in, in, in England with one of these on, so I'm quite excited about having this. Oh, the D4's fallen right off. Sorry, the D7 mount has. Right, before I tighten that on, I need to undo that screw as well. Pop that back in. So there it is. Like, I haven't fitted all the bungs on here yet because you get like a little uh, little peg bung so you can flap it down when you want to. But uh, if I just turn that on now. It's pretty damn good, isn't it? <laughs> That's pretty damn good. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Pretty pleased with it. Putting this back on. It's good. So or th this bit I can do at the very, very end. So let's just get the, because there's lots of uh, little bits here to fit to it to make it all work properly. I've got a clear lens for it. I've got loads of screws to put together in there, so I'll do that a little bit later. Let's start getting all the panels on. So I'm just gonna lower it a fraction. Let's get this, uh, the right panel on first. Now you always start at the right panel first. Why? Because of, it's got the larger piece on it. So it's left as I'm looking at it, but it's the right side as you're riding the bike. So you've got little black bungs in here and they go over the little prongs at the front. So it's going to be tight around here, but it's all doable. I've done it <laughs> a thousand times, probably. Okay. 
There we go. So there. So that's all the screws on the plastic panels downwards done, apart from the ones inside here on the radiator. We'll do those at the end when we, when we put the front up. Right, so on this side, we're gonna get the wind deflector put on. It's so great we had to move the handlebar so freely. And the only way you can do that is if you've got a lift. Otherwise you're scratching your tire against the tarmac or against the rubber floor, chewing up your floor. Right, so that's that side done. That is great, that is really, really good. Look at that, see that? So you just do that and you can get a tiny little bend on it, which is perfect for that little screw just in there. Marvellous. Very good. So I'm just putting the last two screws under the front. Left-handed job. Yeah. Right. That's done. That's a wrap. Almost. Almost a wrap. And is that in of K2 level? Yeah, it is. I did that all on the, with up on the ramp and I have got it level. Impressive. Almost there. So much neater. I used to have wires coming down in between the, the, the tank and the tank cover. They're not there anymore, everything's underneath. Are you alive? <laughs> That's the wife. Fuel cap, turn the bike on. Obviously the fuel cap shouldn't open. You then turn the bike off and you obviously got so long to open up the... <laughs> I got worried then, just a little bit, just a little bit. There we go, so that now opens. Good, let's put the front seat on. That's in the low level at the back, yeah. I like it high at the front, low at the back. Lovely. And then we need to configure all this because at the moment my, my rear brake light is unplugged. Uh, so I need to plug it in and we'll, we will film that as well. Right, let's turn this off. I need to go inside and just check in with the wife to make sure she knows I'm alive. Back in a minute. I don't know if, um, I don't know, uh, well, I know, I know I didn't mention this earlier. I completely forgot that, there's a, that I didn't show you the full complete thing. So what you get, you get this clear perspex that fits in between the, the frame which is mounted to the, the bike. Uh, and they've got, but this just pops off as well. It, I was like, you, you've got to like probably wet it or something, but you've got these, these really high quality, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they're aluminium, but they're, they're, they must be, because they, they, you can tell they're not going to rust. And, and it's quite an expensive item as well. So this pops off if you don't want to have that clear perspex on there, but that's, that's what's going to protect you from an expensive lamp repair on, on your Beamer. So you've got that, and obviously legal regulations, I don't, and depending what country you're in, you can't ride with this in the upright position at night time. Uh, now I, I, I essentially think you can, because especially if you've got Denali's on here as well as running lights. The whole idea is there's it's some, quite some resistance on this, so, and plus it's perforated, so you're not gonna find the wind throwing this up and you know if it does it's not a big problem if it does it just sits like like so but that is that's how you're supposed to have it for night riding and then 
you push it up and if you just wet wet these bits here and just push that back and they should pop on I can say that it's quite um, how can I put it not hard work it's a very high quality well engineered product it's um, you know, it's, it's, it's impressive. It's very, very impressive. And, and that, that just feels like absolute quality. So if we now turn this on. And there you have it. Just wait for the um, camera to adjust. And there you have it. It's really, really pretty. Like, I, I must admit on the camera, it's coming through a lot more yellow. Whereas here in the workshop, in real life, it's more amber. Um, but I think it's a really, really pretty effect. And uh, they do say amber's supposed to be a lot better for catching driver's eyes um, when riding, apparently so. Uh, now I've got this angled at, a, at a, an angle, angled at an angle, where it's uh, you know, a bit higher than a car driver's height. So if we're sitting down, this is more of the height that you are going to experience if you were in a car. That's lovely, truly lovely. Let's now start messing with the programming because I need to uh, completely redo all of my CanSmart settings. So I'm gonna try and record my screen at the same time as I'm doing this. Take the little rubber plug out, put it in a safe place. Don't want to lose that. Plug that into the bike. Right. So I'm going to start from afresh. So you can see um, from the front of the bike. So you've got a D4s on. Right, so um, we've got red circuit, yellow circuit, white circuit, blue circuit, which was the horn. We're now going to make sure that horn is called um, a brake light. And we're going to hit apply. Flash because we hit the apply. Um, <clears throat> and let's just say so that's blue circuit. So. The blue plug on the CanSmart back here, I'm unplugging it, and that is now leaving a complete unused harness lying inside the bike, as we know from earlier, which would, would, would have been originally the, the, the harness to the horn from the CanSmart. But we're now taking that blue plug and plugging it in to, if I can find it, because I know it's lying, here it is, we'll put it into the brake light. And the brake light hasn't got a pigtail on it. I should have been more prepared, shouldn't I? So plugging the pigtail into the B6 brake light, plugging that into the blue, and oh, there we are. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Can you see the, the redness coming to the back of the bike? It's all lit up at the back here. Right, so that's now, that's now plugged in to the back. So I haven't got a camera back here. Right, so for the brake light, I'm gonna quickly set that up now. So I'm scrolling down to the bottom and I've got 0% on the running light or I've got 10%. So I'm gonna put that on 10% and on 100%, I know it's just too bright. It's just ridiculous. All right, it's flashing as well. We don't want California, we want no flashing at all. Uh, and 100% is just, it's just too much. I know it is. So let's put that onto 50% and I'm happy with that. I just wanna stand back here and have a look whilst reaching forward. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Right. So with the, um, just to run through how I've got my three circuits. So if you look here on the red circuit, it shows light pair two. And then if you look on the yellow circuit, it's got right light one and white circuit, left light one. So that tells you right now that yellow and white are running my D4s but I've got them set up as a pair. Yeah, because it's right and left, one. So I've got them both to 10 amps each, which is probably too much if I'm honest. So let's, adjust, let's take that down to 7.5, which is probably still too much, but I don't want them tripping. Uh, and then the red circuit, I've got maxed at 10 at 15 amps. The max for D7s are um, 10 amps on maximum, but they do tend to peak. I've, I've noticed that, and if they peak, it's gonna trip the, the fuse and your lights will go off, so you, you don't want that. So 15 amps, we put that on. Um, right, so on light, auxiliary lights one, 
this is that that is going to be the yellow and the white as a pair so as i start adjusting let's see if it thinks we're in daytime or night it thinks we're in nighttime so by doing that it's doing nothing to the front lights but if i go down to the night intensity running light see it goes off and i can go up and down up and down so there's 10 percent there's 20 percent i like on 20 percent that lights up the road absolutely fantastic and if i flash my lights well, the D7s are coming on right now. Uh, let, let me just turn the D7s off so we don't get any confusion here. I'm just going to turn them off completely. So now what you're getting is the the main BMW light, and you're getting the the D4s on full beam. Okay, right. So off when turn. So but back to auxiliary lights one, the the, the first pair. Um, when I indicate left, as we know, the left side goes out, but it comes back on again, and the right side goes out, and it comes back on again. Now, if I turn that off, I flicked it across now, now I do that, they stay on. Okay. Let's put that back on again. Strobe when horn is active, I want that. Yeah, I'm not going to test that right now because it's getting late. Uh, strobe flash to pass. Yeah, and have you noticed how my D7s are still flashing? Now, I've, I've had a message on YouTube about this today where some guy said, if I turn my D7s off, they don't strobe. Now, if you turn them off, he's absolutely right. They will not strobe. So if I, if I go down to, well, I, don't, I can't actually turn it off on here. So I'm going to turn it off actually on the, um, on the switches. So what I'm doing is I'm going to the indicator, I can't remember if I've got to hold it in or press it down three times. I'm going to press it down three times. One, two, three. Right, I'm telling you now, that has now turned off the D7. So if I strobe right now, one, two, three, I'm just getting that. So my D, because my D7s are actually off, off. Now I turn them back on again by pressing the indicator three times. One, two, three. They've come back on again. So there's power going to them. But as you can see on the... Um, on the on the can smart uh, on the hex can smart platform thing I'm, that's in front of me i've got the the running intensity down to zero so if i start taking that night intensity up you'll start seeing them coming on yeah so i recommend it's up to you where you want to put it i don't like them on at all i like to have them completely off for running lights um and same for, for day as well but for the full beam you, nothing's going to happen here because we're not on full beam right now we're on we're on dipped so if i flash they come on and if i strobe one two three they strobe as well but obviously i can turn that strobe off down here so if i go one two three just the d4's strobe obviously the d7s will flash when i activate the strobe because i'm having to do that which i think i'm going to leave like that i quite like that not having a D7 strobe because they are very raised up in the air. Um, there's no need to turn to do the off when turn signal active uh, for the D7s because they're not on for running lights. And strobe flash to pass, yeah, inverse flashing wind hazards. So I've turned that off, but I've got that turned on for the D4. So if I put my hazard lights on, we get this. Okay, that's it really. No point in talking about modulation. I don't like it. I disagree with it. It only works during daylight running hours. And if you start turning it on, we can't even, I can't even show you right now because the thing's it's nighttime and it is nighttime. Um, but when it's in day, daylight and you start putting the modulation up to 100%, you get this flickering in the light, which just makes you, well, for me personally, it makes me think that there's a fault with the lights. And that's the report that I'm getting from other people. So I'm just feeding that back to you. So before you shut down, the um, the portal, the CanSmart portal. All you're going to be doing is checking that the fuses ratings are right. Red circuit, um, 15 amps. That's the D7s. The yellow and the white circuit are together um, on the um, on the D4s, 7.5, 7.5. And just so you understand. Um, the, the reason we run two circuits, if you don't run yellow and white, or, or it doesn't matter which ones you run, if you don't run those circuits, two, two circuits, one circuit per D4, well then you can't, do, you can't do that. And you can't do that. Because the whole idea is it takes power away from one of the circuits and it can't do that 
if you've got one circuit feeding both. So I couldn't even do that on the D7s if I wanted to because there's only one circuit running both D7s. I hope that's clear. Right, I think that's a wrap guys. And I, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, I know I've got loads and loads of videos, but there's also always new information. There's new people coming to the site and wanting to watch current stuff. So I'm sorry if it's been repetitive. I hope you enjoy it. If you have, can you please leave a comment? Can you give me a like or a dislike? Uh, and if you haven't, why not? Bloody subscribe, guys. All right. Have a great weekend. Uh, or Sorry, I'm probably not even going to post this until Monday, but have a good one. And I will see you most certainly in the next video. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> stop press, stop press. If you like this Lone Rider motor guard, don't just go to Lone Rider. Don't just, please don't go, just go there. I am an ambassador for them. I've got the motor bag as well. A video is coming on that later. Uh, obviously I've taken all my Zimmer frame off the back of my bike because I like the whole feeling of the, the GS kind of feel without, without having all the, the stuff at the back. Um, but I will be using my Lone Rider soft bags. I'm looking up here because they're hanging up from my, my workshop ceiling on the Zimmer frame. Um, and uh, I will be using them on my, on my next road trip. So they are pretty fantastic. But uh, anything Lone Rider, please can you click on the link down below if you like this Moto Guard frame, order it, use my code, you'll see it, I can't remember what my code is, I think, I think it's a buy thing, but um, yeah, go through to my website, you'll see a link going through to the Lone Rider website where you can purchase this. Go and look at the soft bags as well, go and look at the tents, I've got the tent as well, I've got a video somewhere, Yeah, there's a link up here to my erection, my tent erection. Over and out, I'm off um, now for the weekend, uh, see you guys later. Bye.